Hindi ko nga yung good. Let me not serious. Ito yung guy, very good in math, very good in science, excellent memory. And then he'll be the talker of the class. And behind the back benches or somewhere, there'll be an exceptional footballer. There'll be an exceptional golfer. There'll be an exceptional artist who's given no credit. And you know what happens? I was a very bad student in school firstly. Very bad. Every Saturday, my parents used to be called to school and complaints. Very mischievous, very talkative, everything. So you know what happens there? If that person doesn't have a strong character, his, his instincts his instincts are suppressed. So what happens is his creativity, okay, creativity doesn't come out. Okay. The student doesn't get an avenue to go ahead and put, put forth his this thing. But one thing, off late I had gone to a few schools uh, and I saw it was really nice to see that you know art is being given a lot of credit. Yes, it is amazing to see all that. Then I saw how do we work in school, how my school work, and I found out the gap that was there. It's really good we're going in the right way. After that, in school, when I spoke about creativity, one thing I realized about creativity is that we should enjoy making mistakes. Because in future, you will love laughing at yourself. I swear it is the best feeling. Laughing at yourself, laughing at your teammates, saying that, oh, we did that, yeah, it was so funny. And I'll give you an example. It was a team that I worked with. I'll give it to you later. And I'll be speaking about another topic. So, what our schools miss here is give, establishing a fine balance between character, a strong character, which the best way to get a strong character is support. Nothing but, according to me, my opinions, nothing builds character like sport. That is my opinion. Nothing lets your creativity flow like art. When I say art, I am not confining to music, fine arts or anything. Let me tell you, mathematics is an art. On the longer run, engineering is an art. If you don't, I, let me give you the connection why I'm calling this an art. Uh, like John played the track. What was the inspiration? Monsoon. Yeah, rain, nature. All your paintings, where does it come from? Nature. No colors, nature. Where does engineering come from? The best innovations. Okay, let me talk about my field. The best. Formula 1 cars. Unbelievable aerodynamics. Where does it come from? Come from the peak of a bird. That's where they take inspiration from. Take the best wind turbine. The whale power wind turbine comes from the fin of a whale. So it's an art where you get close to nature, derive its beauty, and put it into your design. Okay. So this artistic being in every student is not let out in school. Is a few schools yes, but majority no. So we cannot expect so many engineering graduates to come out and be employed. You, you can't expect because you know th their instincts have been suppressed. First of all, if their instincts were not suppressed, we wouldn't have so many engineers. We wouldn't have 7 lakh technical graduates passing out. Because I cannot think of 7 lakh technically competent people at a country like this. 7 lakh technically competent people will make Germany, a country like German, German technology, look like nothing in front of our technology. Imagine 7 lakh technical graduates, everyone who thinks, wow, engineering is an art. I'm going to spend 18, 18 hours a day thinking about engineering. That's how people who are involved in engineering do it. Take it from me, 18 hours. You cannot sleep unless and until you solve a problem. The only time you sleep is when you drop dead or like, okay, I'm sleeping. Oh, I can't take it anymore. So that's the fine balance is missing. And then you write your exams, and force you to write exams, you write an exam, you get an amazing grant, you get into a top college in the country, and you say, okay, I'm going to become an engineer now. And let me tell you, before this exam, when you're studying, your parents will come and tell you one thing. Biggest lie. You study this 12th standard, after you see them chill out. Your life is sorted, you're in engineering college, and you're going to be an engineer, you're going to be B, you're going to be B, E. And one more funny thing that came across is that, Matrimony requires a B degree. <laughs> I swear I don't understand that. I would say our graduates, our engineering graduates today, will be from the lowest IQ round possible because that's how it's going now. And then 
you get into college and you're okay. I've been top <coughs> school all my life. I'm in the top college, so you know I have to be treated like the brass, yeah. But you're not <laughs> because the professor, because you're in a top college. The professor standing there is basically a PhD who knows his stuff, unlike you, who doesn't have an illusion of knowledge. The illusion of knowledge is what is your four years of engineering. Four years of engineering is nothing but illusion of knowledge. I'll tell you how it works. You sit in a class. Morning you go to class at 8.39. You sit. Faculty is teaching something. You think the faculty is starting from ground zero. No. No faculty will start from ground zero. Because it is very difficult. I taught for two years it is very difficult to start from ground zero. I'm not a great teacher maybe. But it's very difficult to start from ground zero. You need to have some backup knowledge. Okay, so what happens is, it's like a one upmanship uh, situation over there. Everyone thinks, oh, I know what he's talking, yes. Oh, you understand what he's talking. Then there'll be one lot of people like, okay, I'm trying to understand. There'll be one lot of people. Okay, that's nonsense. There'll be one lot of people. I don't care, man. Let it just go. Okay, so after that, the guy who's trying to understand it will raise it up. So, I don't know how this works. And the guy who thinks he understands it will say, oh, that's easy. Right there, his question stopped. Because he feels bad. Okay, this guy is better than everyone. Now, you can deny as much as you want that you don't have an ego, but everyone has an ego. You don't want your ego stripped in front of a class of 60 and your faculty who you're going to spend four years with. Okay, who you're, to, who you're going to keep in contact with for the rest of your life, hopefully. And so you don't want your ego to be stripped. So suppressed right there. Everybody thinks ground truth, if you want match to match, like what faculty is speaking, what you're understanding, should be on the same, in the same page. The result will be no one has a clue what is happening, except the faculty himself. Everybody is clueless. Okay, one part I understand, other part I understand, I will link. Very good link done. This is how engineering worked, and I come from PhD Tech, it's supposed to be one of the very good, very good engineering colleges. This is how it works. And the department I studied in also a really good department, so all top students from the state come there. So that's where the illusion of knowledge goes. And I was talking about creativity and making mistakes. So I was part of this team which was developing a high altitude wind turbine, which I'm not part of anymore. Uh, well, it was a very exciting project. One of the, it was amongst the top projects in the country. We were getting a lot of people interested in it. There was one slight problem. There was a mistake in the fundamental idea, <laughs> which nobody saw, and which I happened to see. And since I was part of the team, anything happens to the team, I am responsible. I took up the statement saying, okay, this is wrong. We have to fix it or else somebody's going to bust us. Because we were going everywhere, IAS, Bangalore, IITs, you know, we were going, we were speaking to people at NUS, and I don't know how they didn't spot the error. There was a big, big flaw in the fundamental idea. So my team leader, a very respected team leader, who's also my batchmate, he said, no, it can't be wrong. I said, why? He said, it can't be wrong. I've been working on this for the past three years, it can't be wrong. I said, okay, since you've been working for three years, what, no, how can it not be wrong? Come on, it, it is wrong. I have a map in front of you, it's written. So what happens is, and then I started thinking about this fellow. He was the topper of the school all his life. Ego hadn't been scratched a single minute in the school life. <laughs> I was like, okay, I see where it's coming from. Very good. This is, this is the way to go. <laughs> I'm leaving the team by. <laughs> They're still working on the project. <laughs> I have sold 32 turbines, which is not related to that project. <laughs> and I'm happy. I'm having nice subs every day. Very happy. <laughs> so, this illusion of knowledge, which is start, see, he doesn't understand that this started in the school life. When nobody had questioned, oh, you're good in math, you're the best, you can be good in everything. You have great, great, great grades, you're amazing. Just, just let it go. So this was, this part, this team was the part of the engineering crowd that is technically involved. After this comes the most interesting part of the engineering crowd. It's called the management guru part. <laughs> Everyone is CEO. Everyone wants to be CEO. Everyone wants
want to see me. Oh, I am the chief. I want to be the chief financial consultant of some some okay some big Jew company. So they think they want to do management. And you ask them why management, man? You are spending four years breaking your head with calculus, Laplace transform, finite element, computational gluten. Why do you want to go study mathematics? You want to study number crunching. When you know you spent four years here, you can do something with that. They say, I want to manage an engineering firm. <laughs> I say, very good man, that's amazing. Do you know how much engineering you study? Let me tell you, a B, B graduate doesn't make you an engineer. You are just <laughs> taking baby steps into the world of engineering, as I realize because I am going in and I know how much I know. When I see a car and I'm supposed to work on it, I know how much I've learned from the books. And I know how much I learned on the field. And they say, I'm going to manage an engineering firm. I'm going to IIM. I'm going to all these big fat universities, amazing pay scales. OK, good, fine. And then what happens is that's where the engineering comes from. Second day, they'll start doing quantitative aptitude. On the book, they will take a very famous author. They'll sit, break their heads with it day and night. And the, the CAT exam will come. They will get a good score, go to some college. Most of them don't go to any college and they will end up in an engineering job. So you're neither an engineer nor are you a management guru. So you're in between and your life's over. Your career is over. Unless and until you are very talented, you're a very talented dancer, an artist, a musician, that you can take another career. But most of us are not. We're not that lucky. So this, this whole idea Escapism comes in. I'm not good at this, I'm going to do that. I'm not good at this, I'm going to do that. Where does it start? School. Again, school. The school kills it right there. But like I said, there are schools which are you know, nurturing really good talent also. <coughs> then comes, uh, our, then there is one person after my this thing asked me, what are you going to do after engineering? I said, most probably since I'm going to do research, I'm going to go abroad. I said, okay, so you're a brain drain case from the country. Took everything that you put from the country and you're leaving. I said, okay, fine. Tell me one group which I can sit with, okay, possibly sit with and discuss, discuss technically, where I can completely indulge in engineering talk, totally. You will not find that group, you will not find that group in most of engineer, most of the engineering colleges. Okay, so that is one problem why brain drain happens. And then further, there was this question of, uh, you know, what happens to these people who are very dedicated? These people do not care about dressing sense, no dress code, nothing. They like to go to college in half pants. It's not allowed. Okay, so we are suppressed, so we can't work and go, go into our research field. So that is the reason brain drain is also happening. So my time's up, so I'll stop. Thank you.